This is Editing Luxon, and I would just like to say that this video was recorded before the new Red Dead Online update, so some of my views might be slightly different, but in general the video should just be the same. Anyways, enjoy the video. Red Dead Online really is at an all-time low, and that's just really clear by now. So there isn't really much to do in terms of videos and just generally playing Red Dead Online right now, so I thought I would check out something else. This is something that has been getting more and more popular, especially over on Twitch. And that is Roleplay, the Red Dead Redemption 2 Roleplay. Now on the GTA 5 side of things, it's already massive with 5M. Over on Twitch, you get 400,000 viewers sometimes watching it, and that is insane numbers. When it comes to watching Red Dead Redemption 2 on Twitch, to be honest, all you'll ever find is roleplay. It's very hard to find someone streaming Red Dead Online or just the story. It generally is just the roleplay. And that is the same over on the GTA side of things. It's hard to find someone playing GTA Online or the story of GTA. And on this channel, I've never actually done a video going over the Red Dead roleplay. I've had a lot of comments asking if I've ever checked it out. And before making this video, I hadn't. I'd never really touched the roleplay side of things. So as you can see, things are adding up nicely. This should be a good video. So let's get straight into it. Are you interested in starting your own gaming channel on YouTube, but simply don't know where to start? Well, I've got just the thing for you. By using the link in the description and the pinned comment, you can get access to a 50 minute free training session with a YouTube expert. And believe it or not, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about someone who has monetized many YouTube channels. One of them even being this channel right here, which I then took over. Some of the other channels he's monetized includes Joas97, Foot Fanatic, and Open Vision. And of course, he's helped other gamers monetize their own YouTube channels. He's even been helping me monetize my very own YouTube channel from scratch, and the first video I uploaded got over 30,000 views in about a month, which is insane. So the man behind all this is Jamie. Jamie is an expert when it comes to helping YouTube channels grow and improving your skills as a content creator. So I really can comfortably say that if you work with Jamie, the quality of your videos will improve drastically, and that really just is the case. So if you are interested in starting your own gaming YouTube channel, or even if you're not, then you might as well go to the link in the description. It really is just a gift. You get 50 minutes with a YouTube expert for completely free. So go down into the description or the pinned comment and check it out. So first things first, you actually have to download the roleplay side of the game. And to do this, you need to go to the Red M website. Yes, this is basically the same as 5M, but it's just the Red Dead version. A link to this website can be found in the description so you can easily check it out for yourself. So upon loading up the website, you just need to hit download client. It's a pretty clean website, it's not got too much to it, but it is really clean. So just hit download client and you'll be able to get started. I was actually quite surprised to see that this only takes up 5GB, but there is a bit of a catch. To download this 5GB, it's going to take hours. And for some people, it actually is only an hour or two. But for me, it was about 24 hours, and I have seen for other people it is like this. This is because it doesn't really use your Wi-Fi. I don't know too much about this, but it's something to do with peer-to-peer -peer networks, and that it doesn't use your Wi-Fi, and then it will be using their Wi-Fi, and it's based off how many people are on Red M or something like that. But basically, this could take a while, so you just have to be patient. But at the end of the day, it's only 5 gigs, so it really isn't too bad. So once you load up Red M, you're going to be greeted with what is basically a launcher. It's basically like Steam and everything like that, except there's nothing to buy. This is completely and utterly free. All you need to have is Red Dead Online or Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, there are a load of different roleplay servers. There are some big ones like Wild RP, and then there's some other ones. And this one is pretty big, and it's certainly growing very fast. And this is Dakota Riverbend. So the Dakota Riverbend server is the server we will be checking out today. So it was time to get straight into the game. Now upon loading up into Dakota Riverbend, you'll notice that there is a maximum capacity. Now this does seem to change a bit, but it shouldn't really cause any issues. I've never noticed it to be full. Obviously there are going to be peak times when it's way busier than others, but you shouldn't really run into any issues here. And there is actually a different loading screen to the classic Red Dead Redemption 2 at the start, which is pretty cool to see. Once you've loaded in, you'll be greeted with the character creation scene. Now, my game was a little bit broken. Now, it is really worth noting that this is in the beta stage, I believe, so there is going to be bugs, you can expect that. But it is definitely still a playable experience. So you'll have your character creation scene, and then you'll have your area where you'll be able to select an outfit for your character. 
Now, for some reason, like I just mentioned, my game was bugged and I couldn't see my character, so I had no idea what I was customizing, so I just sort of had to wing it, to be honest. The same went for picking the clothes, so I literally just had to pick random things and hope for the best. Once you've finished all that, you'll just be put straight in. It's for me and Valentine, and I was in the hotel, so I just walked out, and there I was, in the Dakota Riverbend world. Now, the first thing I noticed was the new map icons. There were so many, it was just packed on the minimap, which is really what we should be seeing in Red Dead Online. So the first thing I did was just run around for a bit, to be honest. I was just getting used to everything. I did have a big look at the map, and I just looked around at all of the things, all of the icons, and what it all was. And it was really cool to see. Just from having a quick look around it, I was able to find stuff like farm shops, dog shops, coach deliveries, and even boats. And I have to say, I was really impressed. It is worth noting when you first spawn in you are going to have nothing and I really do mean nothing. I mean you'll have maybe a few pieces of bread or something like that but basically you're not really going to have anything. If you've got no weapons, no horse or anything like that. The reason you've got a bit of bread and water is because you have hunger and thirst. Now this isn't something really in Red Dead Online, obviously we have it with the cores but with this you actually have to eat and drink to survive. And when it does come to health, one shot and you're probably going to die. This is actually a much more realistic take on things. In Red Dead Online, you can take about eight, and if you have a tonic, you practically can just go forever. Whereas on the roleplay side of things, one shot is really lethal. After walking around Valentine for a bit, I noticed Harriet just sort of standing there. I went up to her, and this was actually the Valentine farm shop, which was really, really cool. If I interacted with Harriet, I could buy animals, which was awesome. I could go ahead and buy anything I wanted, really, and I went ahead and bought a rabbit. Yep, I bought a rabbit, and it was actually pretty cheap. When you first spawn in, you're gonna have about $40 to spend, which will definitely get you by, but it's nothing to really write home about. Definitely wasn't a smart purchase to make. I really don't suggest just buying a rabbit straight off, but I wanted to investigate and I wanted to see what it was like. And upon buying this rabbit, I could just spawn it in and it would follow me. And I thought this was really cool. I did just have a rabbit following me. It was a bit slow and it didn't really keep up that well, but it was really, really cool to see. And this would be something so easy for Rockstar to implement into Red Dead Online since all the resources are already there. They just need to put it together and that wouldn't be hard to do at all. And then you would just be able to have some pets and that is literally easy content for Rockstar to make that players would enjoy. It's so easy just to find content for Rockstar to add to Red Dead Online. You can just go into a roleplay server and everything is already there. And it's such a shame that roleplay isn't available on console because this is just a really good way to play Red Dead Online. A good way of putting the Red Dead Redemption 2 roleplay is that it's everything Red Dead Online should have been. And I completely agree. So to make a quick bit of money, I did a wagon delivery. Now this didn't take long at all, you just go up to behind the general store and you can make a delivery. This is an easy way to just make a bit of money, and it's something that I think should be in Red Dead Online, like I've mentioned with other stuff. No one came after me or attacked me in this delivery, it was just a nice simple delivery I could do to make a little bit of money. The only issue I had, that once I made this delivery, I was in the middle of nowhere with no horse. Now this was a bit of an issue. I did actually stumble across a telegram, and this is really cool. You can send telegrams to other users, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but this was really cool to see. So after spending a while running around trying to find the horse and having no luck, I decided to do what every intelligent person would do and jump off a cliff. And yeah, I really do regret this one. I had to sit there and wait for about four minutes for this time to expire. Now someone could actually come up to me and respawn me, I believe, but there wasn't really anyone around. So I did just have to wait and then it respawned me in the exact position that I died. So yeah, just some advice. Do not go ahead and jump off a cliff. You will definitely regret that one. So I did just start running back to Valentine, but I did come across a horse and I was able to tame it very quickly. And then I was just able to quickly ride around anywhere I wanted. Once I got back to Valentine, I actually started a bounty mission, which was a complete mistake. I don't really know what I was thinking because I didn't own any sort of weapon. I just had my bare hands. I did realise this halfway through rising to the bounty, but I just decided to wing it. I got there and there were loads of enemies and I ran. And I, yeah, I was running for my life. And I think we all know exactly how that ended. So that was my experience with the Red Dead Redemption 2 roleplay. And I really enjoyed it. 
It is a little bit buggy at the moment. I did run across some issues, but that doesn't mean that it's not playable. I really do suggest playing this. And there are loads of other servers, but the one I checked out today was Dakota Riverbend. I really do think that it's a great server. It does also have a really good Discord with a great community, and I'm going to put all the links to everything you need down in the description below, along with a link to the free YouTube training course. So if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any content just like this. And I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments on the Red Dead Redemption 2 roleplay. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.